Welcome back, friends. And welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy. Today, we're going to finally take on Bowser. We've been ready for a while. I do believe it's just down here. Is it? No. Do I have to... Who do I talk to to go pick on Bowser? No. Wait. Oh. <laughs> I had to talk to Rosalina again. Let's go get my special one. Off we go. Light transformation. <sighs> there is a warp field inside the castle. Oh, Mario. Hurry inside. Hurry. voice acting they should either commit or not that looks so weird running we're gonna we're gonna lose so many lives here hey little, little my mama says this fight isn't for us isn't just for us, it's also about saving your special one. Please be careful. Whatever you do, don't fail. No pressure. The spotlights have their own gravity. Try sticking to them. This is how we walk up walls. And have little freak out moments. It's gonna be lovely. need you <laughs> I love dry bones in the older Mario games then like you could actually be dry bones that was my favorite look at that through there no hits I love dry bones <laughs> he's, he's, he's so cute Saved it. Okay, we gotta keep going, otherwise, they're gonna fall. Oh, overshot, 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 overshot. There we go. Hey, look at that. We got two lives. Okay. We can do this. These go away. Yeah. 
Oh, they do. Never mind. They do. Those ones do go away. Whoops. Okay. You need to go this way. Watch out for him. There we go. We're okay. We're not okay. Okay, we get nice up and close. Oh, that was really close. Okay, we're still fine. You know, we're, we're not we're not overheating at all. Um, we're ignoring that. Oh no. Uh. We got it. Who likes Bullet Bill? Because, oh my goodness, he is not liking me right now. Okay, there we go. How we manage that? I do not know. Hi, Bowser. Hi, Junior. Looking for Princess Peach? Too bad, cause she's with me. <laughs> seems so unenthusiastic. Yep, 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 big little platform. My goodness. Hey Bowser, how are you doing? Finally. Got here just in time to see the creation of my galaxy in the center of the universe. Watch and weep. I'm self-absorbed. From this galaxy I'll rule a great galactic empire with peach by my side it will last forever i will rule every pitiful corner of the universe so mario as you can see i got big plans stopping you is at the top of my list oh i'm not important am i that important to you mr bowser that didn't work Am I not supposed to do that? I thought I was supposed to do that. Or is there... Is there bouncy thingies? There we go. I couldn't even get a coin off of that. I want a coin. 
Thank you. Oh, oh no. Oh no, me no touchy. <laughs> Nope. Oh, yes. 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 Interesting. I didn't think that one would work. I'm glad it did, though. There we go, and then we gotta do that again, I do believe. No? No. He should have. Yeah, he should have done that. Woo. Woo. Three? Three times? No. Oh, dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh, I'm gonna die here. That's what it's gonna be. There we go. There we go. There we go. He goes this way. He turns. I hit. He comes around. I hit. He comes around. I hit. I miss. I miss. I miss. I hit. Okay. Oh, this isn't over. This isn't over. He's coming back. He relishes in the warmth. In the fire. Grab the coins. Grab the coins, please, Mario. Mario, grab the coins. I'm not a complete idiot. Where's is there no more? Okay, well I'm gonna take it there's no more. At least we got one. One is better than none. That can't be it. No. Huh? It is? Why did Junior just abandon Peach? There he is. You okay there, buddy? No, my galaxy, my empire. This can't be happening. Supernova. 
I believe that's what the term is, is a supernova. Why hello there, Rosalita. <laughs> you hear the baby stars? These newborns will grow up to become galaxies someday. When stars die, they turn to stardust and scatter across the cosmos. Eventually that stardust reforms to create a new star. And so the cycle of life continues. But the cycle never repeats itself in quite the same way. So, oh, you'll see. I feel like she was talking to us there. Not Mario. It was all a dream. It wasn't fully a dream because that one trash collector guy's there. There's the queen bee. It's just everyone. Everyone's here now. carries the essence of stars, even all of you. Ah. Welcome! Welcome, new galaxy! did it! We beat the game! I thought that would take longer. Why do I remember so many other steps in that? Yeah, we'll take this moment as the credits roll to just like do the reflection because it, 
it's such a good game. It's very intricate. There's a lot of different paths that you can take. So if you are having issues in one room, in one galaxy, you can go to another one. Because we didn't even get all of them. We've seen all the galaxies, but we didn't do all the stars. We didn't do the majority of the comets, but the comets are just challenges anyways. But it's a nice change in difficulties. We got really creative with some. Let me know what one's your favorite. I don't know if I really have a favorite. But now I can easily say that we will most likely not be doing Mario Galaxy 2 unless there's like a great demand for it. Um, I never beaten that one. I didn't like it as well as I did this, this game. But definitely more Mario games in the future. I'm really glad though that they did the remaster and brought it to the Switch. That is something that I really enjoy of that, is just having the upped graphics. Patrols are still wonky, but it still works. Oh, I think that rock boss is almost one of my favorite bosses. With the boo bombs. The bombs of boo. photo this is a little rock ball and I have that as a screensaver like come on now oh and there was also more Luigi stars too I forgot about those much for playing my game oh. welcome back I knew you would return eventually please look down at your feet this number you see represents the number of power stars you need to access another world whether you succeed or fail just attempting the challenge will show something about your character is that what the when we get to play it all as Luigi. I think that is. I think that means it's Luigi turn. Are you just giving me my five power-ups? Yes. Yes, it is. Sure. We'll use them. We'll take them. Okay, there was a storybook. Yeah, I do believe the 43 is the ones that we have remaining, so it'll be everything, and I'm not interested in doing that right now. Ooh. Let us begin. But you gotta love the fact that you finish the game, you come back, and there's still more. Chapter 1! The story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. No, 
Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the, rusted spa the rusty spaceship, and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. Chapter 2 Days passed with no sign of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for or as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread and milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea, but... I forgot to bring water. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter and the girl began to pout. As long as I have Starbite, it's I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh and the girl couldn't help but join in. All right, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Chapter 3 A beam of light pierced through the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. A little girl... The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get to that comet. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm, I'll bet there's water here too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued to their search for Luma's mother. One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama. The pair traveled through the starry skies, and through, though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there, the girl said busy, busying, busily to herself. 
We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike any they have ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? The library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared in the horizon. From the planet, another luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one luma broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot luma parroted back. My mama, my mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any signs of stopping. The girl was too charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh, and that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? Lumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming all of them, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7 After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came to view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. Remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill on bright and windy days. And... I want to go home. I want to go home right now. The girl burst into tears, and the Loomis didn't know what to do. I want to go home. I want to go back to my house by the hill. I want to see my mother. The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't out there in the sky because... Because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girls cried... Cries echoed through the stars, and a hush fell over the area. Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama, because she's part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love star bits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, said the girl, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet, a soaring comet that can carry you all on this journey. 
With that, Luma trailing bands of white soaring high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The ground shook and the bright light poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. girl could scarcely believe her eyes but how she kept asking our destiny as lumas is to transform into different things said a red luma who had suddenly appeared stars comets planets we can become all of these things when i grow up i want to become a star that makes someone's special smile said a green luma a blue luma chimed in that luma turned into a real cutie of a comet didn't he All the Lumas together said, No more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper. And she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, star bits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, as its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final chapter. With its many lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. The lumas excitedly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, this is my family now, and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do, and when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that would make some other happiest. That night, when the girl laid down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home to every home once every 100 years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carried the lumas and the girl continues on its journey to this very day. With more family members in tow than it can, than can be counted, it's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every 100 years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The end. That's all. My story is finished. That's cute. And I don't think I've ever finished it. I did not mean to do that. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> like, doing the whole, don't make me go through that all again. I never finished the book. At least I don't think I did. But it's well worth it. Now there is series about Rosalina as there is with like everyone in any video game and all that stuff. But I think that's a good way to just end the game. We got to visit all the planets. We got to beat Bowser. And we got to finish off Rosalina's storybook. Now we can go and beat Bowser again. It's a forever like saved at that state, but yet it will count save afterwards. One of those final battle things. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for being on this journey with me. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed the space. And we'll be back with another with our first episode of another series. But until then, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!